Hello everyone, B1B Flyer here with the first video in a series I'm calling From Blister to Battle with the intent of demonstrating what I do to prepare both metal and plastic miniatures and getting them ready for paint. These are the two miniatures that I'll be showing you as I go through on my techniques and what I do to get them cleaned up, uh, to pin them, reposition, or drill for antennas and things like that. All of these techniques are simply what I do. Uh, they're in no way required to assemble a miniature. They're just optional. Make your miniatures look a little better for paint or something you might want to try if you want to modify or reposition a miniature that you've gotten and want to make it a little bit different than the standard pose. So what I'll show you now are the tools that I'm going to use and I use most frequently. There are many options out there, but you will want to consider perhaps something close to or a derivative of what I'm using. I have some simple wire cutters, great for using to cl clip off of the sprue. I've also got some flat surface pliers. If you look here, they're uh, flat right in the uh, in between the two, two tines there. Uh, it helps with bending or moving things without marring up metal surfaces. Big tool that you're gonna use, uh, that I use most frequently is the hobby knife. I prefer the Exacto uh, Z, uh, number 11 Z series blades that you can tell they have a little gold blade there. They do stay relatively sharp uh, for a decent amount of time, but over time they will start to get a little bit of dents and damage to the blades and you'll have to replace them. I also use, and you've seen me use, and if you've watched my plastic modifying and heating up with water video, just straight razor blades for taking miniatures off of bases or removing entire limbs. And then I also like these on occasion, the curved X-Acto blades for getting onto areas that might be rounded or even recessed a little bit using just the curved edge to get into an area where a flat blade might not work. Other things that are really gonna be helpful, especially with the metal miniatures, is a good series of, or a set of needle files. Uh, I bought these, I think at uh, Lowe's or Harbor Freight, I can't remember, but they're available there. They're relatively inexpensive and these will definitely help you take those miniature mold lines off uh, that you may or may not be able to get to with a hobby blade or that might just be so thick that a scraping away with a hobby blade is gonna be a lot of work and potentially uh, and not at a good angle for you. Another one that didn't come with the set that I use quite frequently is this one with a rounded blade, again, for getting into some of those recessed areas uh, that might have a, a panel line on them. And another, another uh, option as well that I've picked up is this is a uh, simple S uh, Swiss Army knife. Uh, some of them have a file that you could use. This one's got a recessed kind of a, a textured file. It's not the slanted uh, teeth ones, but if you have one of these lying around, that'll actually work in a lot of cases. So you don't need to necessarily go out and buy a bunch of new stuff. For the plastic cleanup, I love to use old emery boards that my wife has either finished using or that I've stolen without telling her. They work great. I, I sand down most plastics with these. I also work them on, uh, on some metal components here and there too to smooth out pits and uh, raised areas. Also, if you do any sculpting or work with repositioning and need to do some filler, those will clean up some of those lines too. Other things you can do, I've taken some some fine grit sandpaper and I've glued it to a toothpick to get in between certain little areas that are hard to get to. Uh, also available are, these are called sanding sticks. You can find these at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. They come in a bag. Um, these are the ones that you usually use for like plastic model kits, but they work the same. They come in different grits. I bought a variety pack, relatively inexpensive and extremely useful both on plastic and metal. If you're kind of clumsy or you uh, have fingers that aren't as uh, dexterous as you'd like to be, a good set of tweezers would be good to acquire. Again, you can find these at hobby stores or you can go to a cosmetics department, Walgreens, Walmart, any of those, and get just some standard tweezers. Those are really useful. You've seen me use and talk about dental tools before. These are some old dental tools that I bought at a swap meet or a yard sale or something like that. I don't know why they had them, but they were uh, mostly broken. And what I did is I took some files or cutters and actually made little wedge scrapers and little pointed areas that I use for, uh, again, metal and plastic cleanup. But and also in addition to that, they're great for some sculpting and working with green stuff and putty. Occasionally when you clean up plastic miniatures, you'll get some fuzzy little areas that uh, you just can't seem to scrape away with a hobby knife, a brass brush or potentially a steel brush really does a great job of taking some of those little fuzzies and removing them completely. You can see I've used this one quite a bit. It works fine on Battletech miniatures uh, that I've tried on the second series. I haven't tried them on the first first series, the original plastics that came out. I imagine it'd probably be okay, but uh, you can see there I get plenty of use out of it, so obviously I think it still works. 
I've also got, I think I picked these up at Lowe's or at uh, Walmart or something like that. It was a set of thin, uh, essentially it's just a, a handled hacksaw. Uh, I use this for cutting metal and it's uh, not as uh, precise or as, as uh, even as a miter, miter box and a hobby saw, but I, I do use it quite a bit. It's, it's, it's flexible, so you do kind of have to be careful with that, but I use this quite a bit and have uh, severed many a limb on a metal miniature before. Now we'll get into pin vices and drills. There are several kinds of pin vices. You're really gonna wanna get something like this for pinning, drilling out antenna holes, doing missile tubes, things like that. I've got two here. I've got one that's got a double end and I've got one that's got a pivoting base to it so you can rest it in your palm. They also make ones that have a, a ball at the end to pivot. I don't have one of those, but uh, I, I would probably get one if I didn't have these two already. You'll either get or need to purchase a, a plethora of drill bits. There's many different sizes that come with it or that you'll probably be right next to it in the same department or at your uh, local hobby store. And then one thing you'll see me use and I'll talk about more, uh, these are meant for drill press and doing some uh, drill into uh, metal and things like that. But I got these at Harbor Freight. I don't remember if they came as a two pack or as one, but I think they were less than six or seven bucks. And if you use those 20% off coupons, you can save yourself a couple bucks too. But I use these all the time. They do kind of break easily, especially the smaller ones. If you were gonna get one set, if they do come individually, I would get the thicker ones here. Uh, I use these two for pinning mostly, and these smaller ones, quite quite honestly, quite a bit for uh, antennas and drilling out missile tubes. Uh, that hasn't stopped me from using some of these smaller ones for the same thing, but if I were to get just one set, I would get these over again every time. And that's it for right now. The the intent is to take you through step by step. In the second video, we'll start prepping the miniatures, cleaning up mold lines, and getting things ready for assembly, repositioning, and finally primer and paint. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned. Please subscribe. If you have any questions, post in the comments. I'll post some links and some of the uh, items that I've shown here. In addition to that, feel free to visit our website, camospecs.com, and uh, Camospecs Online has a Facebook page as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.